Welcome to Children's Sunday School on Sunday morning, of course. Let's pray first. Dear Father God, help us to understand sometimes this part of the second missionary journey gets all combobbled in my head, and now I'm going to try to get kids to try to figure it out. I ask, O oh Lord, that you would um, come and be with us and help us to know you better because we were in Sunday School this morning. And we look forward to the day that we're actually sitting in Sunday school rooms with a teacher. Do it quickly, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, the memory verse comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 27. And this is what it says. Now here is what I am trying to say. Say that much with me. Now here is what I am trying to say. All of you together are the one body of Christ. And each one is a separate and necessary part of it. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Again, now, all, now here is what I am trying to say. All of you together are the one body of Christ. And each of you is a separate and a necessary part of it. Look at my hand, guys. I don't have the cast on. After all these weeks of not being able to use this hand, I can use it now. It's weak, but I can use it to do stuff. And you know who's happiest about it is this hand. Because this hand had to do all of that work when this hand couldn't do it. It's because both of my hands are a part of the same body. Same thing in a church. The person who preaches, the person who takes up the offering, the person who figures out where the offering is going to go, the person that cleans the church. All of those people are a necessary and separate part of it. And as a result, they all fit together and they're all in one body. And that's what this lesson is going to be about. Okay, it's going to talk about different people in different towns where Paul went on his missionary journey and how they all had different jobs to do. Last Wednesday, I talked to you about it being in Philippi, remember? And they were down in the prison and the earthquake came. Okay, so they left Philippi and they went to a town called Thessalonica. It's a fun name. Say it with me. Thessalonica. It's the place where the book of Thessalonians, the two books of Thessalonians, was written to the people who lived in Thessalonica. Okay? They went there, and for three weeks, three different Sabbaths, they went and preached in the synagogue. And some Jews and a bunch of other people who weren't Jews came to believe in Jesus because of how Paul preached about Jesus dying on the cross for us and coming back to life again. But after three weeks, the Jews became jealous. And they gathered some bad guys from out of the marketplace, and they made a mob. And a mob is when a bunch of people are just going and doing crazy stuff and not thinking. So that's what they did. And they said, we're going to go get Paul and Silas and we're going to hurt them bad. They're staying over at Jason's house. So they went to Jason's house and Paul and Silas must have been hiding. Because instead of getting Paul and Silas, they grabbed Jason and they drug him down into the middle of the city. And they brought charges against Jason. And Jason posted bond. That means he gave the government a portion of money and that money meant that Paul and Silas were going to be safe. And then he went back home again and he got Paul and Silas out of town. So they left at night and Paul and Silas went to the next little town and that town is called Berea. Say it, Berea, Berea. They went to Berea. And it says in the Bible that the people of Berea were of more noble character than the other people. And whenever they heard what Paul was saying, they went home 
they opened up the Old Testament scrolls and they checked to see if what Paul was saying was true. They kept checking it out, okay? The Bereans did. And um, they were there for a while. And then, of course, the Jewish people came and stirred up a crowd. And they came and they drove them out of town. But this time, they just drove out Paul. And Silas and Timothy stayed and worked in the church in Berea. See how it's different? Because Paul is the main speaker, but he's the one that got in the most trouble. So they pushed him out. But Silas and Timothy, another part of the body, were able to stay and get the church started and on its feet before they went to join Paul. And Paul went to the next town, and the next town was Athens. And when he got to Athens, he noticed that there were idols all through the town. There were places of worship everywhere. Nobody was worshiping God, but they were worshiping other gods. And so he was starting conversations with different people in the town. And eventually somebody said, hey, why don't you go up to the Areopagus? In the Areopagus, what we do is we sit and listen to new ideas. So since you have this idea about this Jesus, why don't you come to the Areopagus and talk to us there? So on a special day, Paul went to the Areopagus, and there was lots of people sitting in a big circle around him. He was probably down in the middle, and they were probably up a little bit higher. And he told them about Jesus, told how Jesus died on the cross for their sins, told how she, but this is the trick that he did. He said, I have noticed that you are um, a very religious people here in Athens and that you worship many, many gods. But I found an altar to my God because down on that street, there's an altar that says to an unknown God. So I have come to tell you about the unknown God, because I know him. He is the creator of the whole world. See how he used something that they had to introduce them to Jesus? So he, he was the creator of the whole world, and he sent his only son named Jesus into this world to forgive people of sins. And he died on the cross and was buried. And in three days, he came back to life again. And he is resurrected. And people actually saw him. They said, resurrection from the dead. I'm not sure about this idea. This, this, this isn't really makes sense to us. So some of the people laughed at him. And other people said, we might like to hear about this another time. And a few people and one woman came to know Jesus that day. And then Paul left Athens and he went to the city of Corinth. That's where we get the word Corinthians. They lived in Corinth. He went to Corinth and his friends haven't caught up with him yet. So he needed to make some money. And his job that he found to do was to be a tent maker. Did you ever sleep in a tent on a camping trip? He was making tents. And there were two other people there who were believers. Their names were Aquila and his wife Priscilla. And they were tent makers. And so Paul hung out with them and he made tents during the week. And then on the Sabbath, he'd go and preach in the synagogues. And um, he kept preaching in the synagogues again and again and again. And finally, one day he said, I am done with you Jews. I'm going to only preach to Gentiles from now on. And he left the synagogue and he went next door to the house of Titius Justus. And Titius Justus welcomed him and they had worship in his house. And while they were there, Crispus, he sounds like a cereal to me, Crispus came to know the Lord and he had been a synagogue official, a big guy in the synagogue. He comes to know the Lord too. Many, many people were baptized. And one night when Paul was sleeping, God came and told him, Paul, I don't want you to be afraid at all. I want you to know that you will be safe in this city. Keep speaking about me. 
I am with you. You will be safe here. I have many people in this city who believe in me. He was able to preach there for a year and a half. Not a month, not two weeks, a year and a half. And then the attack came. And when the attack came, they brought him before the ruler and they thought they were going to punish Paul. And instead, they punished a man named Sosthenes, who ends up being a good friend of Paul's. And Paul left Aquila and Priscilla in that town pretty soon. And Paul goes to Ephesus. And um, when he gets to Ephesus, he um, preaches one sermon, and then he goes back home to Antioch. Priscilla and Aquila um, were there in Ephesus, and a man came in named Apollos. And we'll talk about him in the next lesson, which will be on Wednesday night. Can I tell you this memory verse again? Now, what I am trying to tell you is this. All of you together are the one body of Christ. And each of you is a separate and necessary part of it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, sometimes we think, oh, I don't really need to be friends with that person in the church because they are grouchy with me. Or I don't think we... It's not true. We need every part in the church Every part in the church is a necessary person in it. And you love all of us. Thank you, Lord, that Paul was brave enough to, to tell people about Jesus and help us to do the same thing. In Jesus' name, amen.